Welcome to 5 News Online. I'm Joe Ellison. Some of Oklahoma's largest hospital systems are past capacity when it comes to COVID-19 patients. In Oklahoma City, healthcare officials are saying most hospitals have dozens of COVID patients waiting for ICU beds. But every bed at four of the state's capital's largest hospitals are full. The hospitals issued a joint statement earlier this month saying Oklahoma City's health care system is at a breaking point. On Monday, Integris Health Hospitals set a new record for COVID patients as the state's vaccination rate lingers at less than 55 percent. According to the Oklahoma State Department of Health, there are more than 133,000 active cases in the state. All right, before we get to other top stories here on 5 News Online, let's get a quick check of that weather. Michelle, we could see some flurries overnight. Yeah, we could see some snow flurries later on tonight, probably around dinner time and then through the overnight hours tonight into a Thursday morning. But don't get too excited because accumulations are looking to be very light and we also will have a mix of rain and also some snow flurries in there as well. So here's looking at one model for tonight, moving in around dinner time, six to eight o'clock and also notice that green and also pink mix in there. It's just going to be probably a wintry mix tonight and then push out of here by tomorrow morning. All of us do have a chance. This seems to snow flurries temperatures, though, because they're going to be close to freezing a lot of it when the snow does reach the ground will melt and so that's why we're not going to see a lot of accumulation with this maybe some dusting at max I think about a tenth of an inch but we will have cool temperatures for tonight so here's looking at some snow totals that one model showing for tonight most of it being across central Oklahoma for us though you can see totals probably zero to maybe some dusting across the area. So if you're tired of the cold temperatures, just wait until this weekend because we have highs in the 40s for the next few days, pretty cool with lows in the 20s, and then a warm up heading into this weekend. Highs go back into the 50s and 60s with a lot of sunshine on tap, Joe. All right, certainly looking forward to that. Thanks, Michelle. A new partnership between Arkansas State Police and RDOT is aiming to help tackle the rise in crime across the state that's been happening over the last few years. The non-emergency phone line is supported by AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Now, this is a bit new. They're promoting it. You'll be able to dial star 277 or star ASP to report any non-emergency issues to police. Now, some examples of this stranded cars, suspicious activity, and even speeding. The resource is available to anyone driving in the natural state with roughly 200 signs promoting this new phone line, and it will be placed around the state starting next week. Now, the rollout will actually start in Little Rock and North Little Rock and then work its way outward. It should take between a month and six weeks. And do you know how states across the country and here in Arkansas received money from the American Rescue Plan Act after COVID hit? Well, for some, they received millions. They can use that money to help their economy. Well, the city of Bella Vista has been allocated $5.9 million and is seeking public comment about plans for these funds. Now, this is video of that bypass, which was a big deal for the city. The guidelines for this money, though, not what you're seeing here, but the recovery of lost revenue due to the pandemic, water sewer, and broadband infrastructure projects, and, of course, employee premium pay. Those are some of the guidelines. They've actually changed and now allow cities allocated less than 10 million to spend that money on any project but within certain parameters. Now this could include many things for Bella Vista. They didn't suffer a revenue loss and they don't own or operate water or sewer so it's freed up that money a bit. City staff has lined out a plan for the funds and they want the public to see that. They're also asking for input. A comment period is open until February the 9th so check out their website to see where they want to use those funds. Well, those are some of your top headlines on this Wednesday. I'm Joe Ellison. Catch up with us again tomorrow right here at 5newsonline.com for more news headlines.